Hello there and welcome to the weekly Outside Views report on European politics. Contrary to the mood at the EU summit in Brussels, Bulgaria's President Rumen Radev spoke out against further military aid from his country to Ukraine. At the end of 22, the former Eastern Bloc country launched a military aid package for Kiev from its armed forces for the first time since the beginning of the Russian war of aggression. I hope that the government will show common sense and that this will no longer be allowed in the future, said Radev on Thursday when he arrived at the EU summit, according to a report by Bulgarian state television BNT. I hear less and less calls for peace and only for victory without anyone somewhere having defined what victory means, said the former fighter jet pilot and air force chief. Bulgaria will continue to help Ukraine and the Ukrainian refugees, but it is time that measures to end the conflict were formulated, Radev said. He wants to work with the EU to ensure that they can lead the debate in the direction of cessation of military action. Bulgaria's president also threatened his country with a veto if a tenth package of EU sanctions against Russia also included sanctions in the area of the nuclear energy industry. Where our interests are directly endangered, we are very attentive and observe things. If necessary, we will veto it, said Radev. In the energy crisis resulting from the war, Bulgaria is dependent on nuclear power from the Soviet-designed Kozlodui nuclear power plant. Sofia only signed contracts with Western partners for fuel for Kozlodui in late 22. In response to Western military aid to Russia attacked Ukraine, ex-Kremlin chief Dmitry Medvedev has promised to build and modernize thousands of tanks. As you know, yesterday our enemy backed abroad for planes, missiles and tanks, is what Medvedev said on Thursday while visiting a mechanical engineering company in the Siberian city of Omsk. Medvedev, who is now deputy head of the Russian Security Council, was apparently referring to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and his trips to London and Paris on Wednesday. How should we answer, is what Medvedev said to employees of the OMS company, which specializes in weapons production, among other things, according to a video that he himself distributed. It is clear that in this case it is natural for us to increase the production of various types of weapons and military technology, including modern tanks, he said. We are talking about the production and modernization of thousands of tanks, he said. Medvedev, who was Russian president from 2008 to 2012, is considered a close confidant of today's Kremlin boss Vladimir Putin and an absolute advocate of aggressive wars against Ukraine. He now demonstratively had f uh, himself filmed in Omsk inspecting armored vehicles. A law has been in force in Russia since last summer that enables the economy to be more closely aligned with the needs of the army. This means that individual sectors can be obliged to supply the armed forces. Moscow repeatedly claims that it is far superior to Kiev militarily. International secret services and military experts, on the other hand, regularly point the Russian problems with equipment, some of which are really serious. In a coordinated effort, the United States and Great Britain have imposed sanctions on seven Russian cyber criminals. The Russians belong to a hacker group that is held responsible for so-called ransomware attacks on public facilities such as hospitals or companies. That's what the two governments said on Thursday. Attacks on computer systems with encryption trojans, so-called ransomware, have been considered a serious threat to cybersecurity for years. Malicious software that has been smuggled in block blocks of companies or paralyzes their infrastructure. As a result, victims can no longer access their data. The perpetrators demand a ransom for the decryption, and that's a particularly lucrative business. Russia is a safe haven for cyber criminals, said US Secretary of State Antony Blinken. There, they could pursue their malicious machinations against the USA, Great Britain and other allies and that undisturbed. 
The British Foreign Secretary added the attacks caused real damage to people and their livelihoods. The national security of Great Britain and its allies will always be protected against serious organized crime, no matter where and in what form it is committed. Schools, hospitals and companies such as the British Post Office have repeatedly fallen victim to cyber attacks around the world. Travel bans were imposed on the cyber criminals and potential assets in the UK and the US were frozen. Germany and Slovenia want to further intensify their already good relations. Germany is proud and happy about the diverse connections between the two countries. That's what Federal President Frank-Walter Steinmeier said on Thursday to his Slovenian colleague, uh, colleague Natasa Pirch Musar during her first visit to Berlin. I promise you that I will do everything together with you not only to maintain and consolidate this relationship, but to expand it further. Both countries are linked by a really deep and lasting friendship, the president said. The non-party lawyer Pirk Musar won the runoff election for the presidency in the small EU country Slovenia in November last year. She is the first woman to head her state. Pirk Musar emphasized that Germany is Slovenia's largest economic partner and the most important investor. It is no coincidence that her second inaugural visit brought her to Berlin. Both heads of state stressed the need to help Ukraine, which had been attacked by Russia in its defensive struggle and later in its reconstruction. Asked about the Ukrainian desire for combat aircraft, Steinmeier pointed out that planned delivery of German Leopard battle tanks are there. That's what you have to focus on now, he said, referring to the arms deliveries that have already taken place in her country. Pirch Musar emphasized, we are not the ones who can do more. We have already done what we can, she said. How exactly does strict censorship work in Russia and what content is specifically searched for? Leaked data from the Russian censorship authority Roshkomnadzor now provide information. Journalists from the German newspaper Süddeutsche Zeitung and the Russian online medium iStories evaluated them. The censorship authority Roskomnazdor or RKN monitors and censors practically all information channels in Russian society for the Kremlin. Websites, social networks, online media and newspaper, radio, television, messenger, search engines, all of them. And the leaked data contains, among other things, email inboxes, contracts and internal presentations. According to the evaluations, in addition to depictions of sexual abuse of minors and articles on illegal drugs, the employees censor information on the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine, but also LGBTIQ issues and criticism of the government. For example, everything that is written online about the destruction of infrastructure in Ukraine ends up on the desks of the censorship authorities. Shortly after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Kremlin increased the pressure on civil society and took action against several critical broadcasters, among other things. A law passed in March 22 provides for up to 15 years in prison for spreading false information about the war. The Russian state media does not speak of a war against Ukraine, but just of a military special operation. The evaluated data leak now shows that if a medium, a YouTuber or a Telegram user, contradicts the Kremlin's official narrative, Roskomnadzor demands its deletion. If the respective service refuses, the authority imposes hefty fines, revokes licenses or blocks the websites. The data also shows that the Russian authority not only censor posts from Russia, but also repeatedly try to block non-Russian language posts from other countries or have them deleted. They also try to exclude Ukrainian or Bulgarian comments on videos to censor also the Netherlands or Germany. The authority also removes unwanted information from the internet for Russian President Vladimir Putin and uh, also other high-ranking government officials. Emails from the data leak show how links to crime or evidence of corruption by Kremlin loyalists disappear from media reports. The documents also revealed that the authority had invested heavily in the development of new AI systems 
in order to identify prohibited content even more quickly. In Serbia, a member of parliament has resigned after watching porn videos during a heated debate over relations with Kosovo. Serbian state television channel RTS reported on Tuesday the resignation of Zvonimir Stevic a few days after footage circulating online showed the socialist MP watching sex tapes in his seat in the plenary chamber. At the time, the parliament was indeed discussing a possible agreement between Belgrade and Pristina. There had been a scuffle between MPs during the parliamentary debate. The now resigned Stevic was born in Kosovo and is a longtime member of the Serbian Socialists who are part of the incumbent governing coalition. Among other things, the party leadership had asked Stevic to resign after the video of his uh, yeah, porn consumption had spread online. Serbia and Kosovo are under increasing pressure from Western states to strike an agreement that would allow relations between the two sides to, let's say, normalize. Kosovo, a country of 1.8 million people with a majority Albanian population, declared its independence from Serbia in 2008, but is still regarded by Belgrade as a breakaway Serbian territory. Due to unexpected effects, the new sex criminal law in Spain has changed again after only four months. The left-wing government tabled a reform proposal in Parliament in Madrid on Monday. The only yes means yes law, which was supposed to make it easier to convict sex offenders and better protect women, has also led to reduced sentences and the early release of sex offenders in recent months contrary to the intentions of the legislature. This sparked fear and a storm of indignation across the country. Since the beginning of October, judges have reduced the sentences of more than 400 incarcerated offenders following the enactment of the rule book, which set lower minimum sentences in some cases. Dozens of sex offenders were released earlier than expected, including a 39-year-old man in uh, Yaida in Catalonia who raped 17 women and had his sentence reduced from 15 to 9 years. The unwanted effects of the law put the government in trouble and the op opposition sensed the dawn before the parliamentary elections at the end of the year. Now there is also a risk of a crisis in the coalition between the Socialists, the PSOE of Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, and junior partner Unidas Podemos, the UP, of Equality Minister Irene Montero, because the PSOE introduced the reform proposal without having reached an agreement with UP beforehand. Montero therefore fears that the PSOE could give in to the demands of the conservative opposition in the forthcoming debates and accept a return to the old way of life. We don't want to return to a patriarchal system in which, as a victim, you were asked whether you were walking properly and, and, and stuff like that, she said. However, PSOE Parliamentary Group spokesman Pachi Lopez rejected such fears and asserted that the principle of the consent of all those involved in sexual acts would not be deviated from. The law also criminalized intimidating compliments and the distribution of sex tapes. With this initiative, the government responded to several cases of gang rape last year in which the perpetrators got off with relatively light sentences. Montero had said that the rape culture would be put to an end. And this concludes this week's video on European politics, but I'll of course see you again tomorrow. I'll be back.